In 2014, I took a trip to America. I was on a mission. I wanted to find out what the latest emerging technology trends were for filmmakers and storytellers. After a week at an expo in Las Vegas, I found what I was looking for. At a small stand at the back of a large convention center was a company promoting 360 degree video content, which was shot on a panoptic 360 degree camera. This isn't very impressive. We've all seen GoPros before. And essentially, this is just a group of them. Arranged in a configuration where you can shoot all angles at once. But it wasn't the cameras that excited me. It was what this company was creating using this system that gave me my first look at what I now consider to be the final medium for storytelling. When I placed on a headset, which at that time was as simple as strapping a phone to my face, I had my first ever 360 VR experience. Even though this was just a low quality 360 degree paragliding video, I immediately understood this little known technology would change the way that we traditionally create and tell stories. I couldn't find the exact video that I saw in that day, but I found this one, which is fairly similar in quality, so you can get the idea that you have to be quite imaginative to understand how this could change. Plus, this one features Batman, so it's got to be good. <laughs> when I returned back to New Zealand, I couldn't get this 360 technology out of my mind. The possibilities that this unlocks with storytelling was mind-boggling. So I started researching to find out what is virtual reality. I quickly learned that this medium is fairly imperfect. There's very limited content, and what was available at the time was seen as very low quality. And there, were very, there was a, a lack of places to even view this stuff. It had a long way to go to become widely adopted. A lot of work was needed for this not to be considered a gimmick or a passing technology such as 3D television. But I pressed on, and in 2014, I founded Staples VR. It's a company that was set up to bring the highest quality of capture for 360 video and virtual game development to New Zealand, and in turn propel a new industry here. I knew this medium would evolve into an extremely powerful tool for storytelling. And when it did, I wanted to make sure that both myself, my company, and New Zealand were along for the ride. Virtual reality is not a new technology. In the 1980s, when it was first launched on the world, people were excited about the idea of virtually simulated environments viewable through these head-mounted displays. But the limits of the hardware at the time quickly became too much for the general public with most being underwhelmed by the resolutions, the low quality of the content, and the high cost of the technology. So it disappeared almost as quickly as it arrived. But then, in 2012, something happened that changed the course of this little-known medium. A company named Oculus, based out of California, started making high-quality, easy-to-use, affordable headsets for virtual viewing. Oculus really quickly became a household name in the VR community. And in March 2014, it was brought by an online media company, also based in California. It was this sale that really set in motion the next three years of rapid growth for 360 VR content. As it now not, had, not only had the high quality headset for viewing that was both affordable and easy to use, but it now also had the backing of the world's largest online audience with a way of viewing 360 videos that didn't even require a headset. The company that brought Oculus was one you might know about. It's called Facebook. If you type virtual reality into Google, you will get the definition of a computer technology that generates realistic images and sounds that simulate a user's physical presence in a virtual or imaginary environment. What you won't see is a statement that I believe as a filmmaker to be the most exciting. What it doesn't say is that virtual reality is a technology that is going to play a significant role in the future history of storytelling. How do I know this to be true? Well, let me show you an example of the power of this medium. We invited some viewers to come to our office and put them through a popular VR experience. 
using an HTC Vive headset, we place them in an elevator. The elevator takes them to the top of a building. When the doors open, the viewers find themselves on the very edge of the very top floor. We then ask them to step out onto a plank of wood, overhanging the skyline. They know that what they're seeing isn't real, and they know that there's in no way they can fall. But using this technology to trick your senses, we're able to tell a story with such immersion, our viewers think that they're in danger. The sense of fear takes over, and most are unable to step off the edge. Still not convinced. Let me pause here for a moment and introduce you to an amazing young man I had the pleasure of working with last year. Eli's been unwell for seven months roughly now. He was fine at school on a Friday afternoon and then the next morning he woke up feeling a little bit funny. He deteriorated quite a bit by the next day. Since then it's just been a whirlwind. We were uh, choppered to Wellington Hospital and then within 24 hours flown up to Starship. Children with the type of illness that Eli has, they are not able to get the messages from the brain to the muscles. Unfortunately, in Eli's case, he's actually unable to tell his lungs to work either. And so we've had to do that for him and he has a machine that's able to move his lungs and breathe for him as well. Probably the biggest challenges that we've faced um, so far is the, um, the divide that we have in it amongst our family. We're at either ends of the North Island at the moment and generally I'm at home with the two boys, the, the, um, Isaac and Jesse, and Tracy and Eli are up here. And although I come up every week, it is hard. Um, it's hard for Tracy to be away from the other boys and it's hard when Eli's going through some bad times to be away from Eli. And it's hard for Eli to be away from them as well. Yep. What other medium can create such an emotion from a viewer than this one? It's the only platform where your consciousness is the medium and where the storyteller uses your own senses against you to trick your brain into creating an emotion or decision based on a, on a, based on a story where we have decided to put you. It's so powerful that you lose your sense of actual reality. Coming from a traditional filmmaker background to now working in virtual has been an interesting experience and I've learned a lot over the last three years. Things like having a camera that can shoot all angles at once changes the traditional on-set environment completely. We're no longer able to stand behind a camera and watch the action as it unfolds. Instead, we've become masters of hide and seek, having to disappear under tables, behind trees, and around corners while the action is taking place, as not to become part of the story. Things we take for granted in traditional filmmaking, such as moving a camera on a drone or on a dolly, now has the added dimension of needing to move at a consistent, sta stable speed, as not to cause, mo cause motion sickness to your viewer. As an artist, the worst thing you can hear after someone looking at your work is that it made them feel sick. The way we write our stories has also changed. In a traditional movie experience, there's this notion that you're one step removed from the story. You're rather a spectator of what is happening, you're not a participator. But in a virtual film, this isn't the case. It's more comforting to have the characters acknowledge your presence than it is to be a fly on the wall. You want them to talk to you, acknowledge you, look at you. We use this interaction as a way to add another level of immersion to a virtual story. Audio has also been, always been an important part of storytelling whether it be sitting around a campfire telling stories to each other or sitting in a surround sound theater. With virtual reality creation, audio has never been more important. You're now telling a story to an audience that can look anywhere they like at any given time. 
And the only way to control that they don't miss your story is with audio. For example, if a gunshot goes off or a door slams, you can use what's called spatial audio to make sure the sound's coming from the right part of the story so that your viewer doesn't miss a, a key part. Staples VR is relatively new to this. We've only been working with virtual technologies for three years. But even in this short time, we've seen an industry evolve at a rapid, rapid pace. We're no longer just an entertainment company. One of our most recent projects was for a New Zealand hospital where we built virtual stories to help expose children to experiences such as MRIs, CT scans, radiotherapy and x-rays before they undertake these experiences in the real world. These are being used to alter children's anxiety levels and ultimately enable them to safely go through a procedure without the need for sedation and also giving a really high quality evaluation process to clinicians who can now accurately guess what a child's reaction will be to the experience. Storytellers, storytellers using this emotive medium have the opportunity to engage audiences in a way which better both their lives and the lives of people around them. We're using this technology to save lives by transporting viewers into dangerous situations such as inside of a burning house fire. This allows them to make an escape plan for if this was to happen in the real world. Our Escape My House experience built for the New Zealand Fire Service was designed to show how to survive a house fire in real time, shot using live action cameras to really showcase the speed and danger of the situation. This has been viewed by over 9 million people worldwide, which means we've been able to reach a global audience with a story made right here in New Zealand. We partnered with DDB Auckland last year to create a campaign which highlights what it feels like to be homeless on the streets of Auckland. What better medium to tell a story which can then create an empathy from a viewer than with VR? We placed our viewers in the exact situation that Auckland's homeless find themselves in every day, a situation no one would want to be in themselves or their families to be in. Our campaign with them, called A Harsh Reality, went on to generate over $350,000 worth of funds for Auckland City Mission that year. When I was researching for this talk, I came across a previous TED talk from a, from a director named Chris Milk. He started directing music videos and then moved on to become a virtual reality filmmaker. He makes the statement that virtual reality is going to play an incredibly important role in the history of storytelling mediums. He goes as far as to say that he believes it will be the last medium. And I strongly believe this is true. We now have a platform for telling stories where our viewer, viewers aren't watching from the sideline. Instead, they're now part of the story. This median, medium gives us the opportunity to distill messages, evoke emotions which excite, educate, and amaze our viewers, like never before. Virtual reality is currently in its infancy. And as more storyteller, storytellers test their theories and create high quality content for this platform, the more exciting the medium will become. I personally can't wait until everyone in this room has the chance to experience the same feeling that I felt back in 2014 in a large exhibition hall in Las Vegas. But the most exciting part of this whole adventure so far is that it's only just begun. Thank you.